good morning class. Got some new stuff to come to the channel and this is one of those lovely videos. So what we're doing here is we're doing a bit of an interesting combination here. So we're taking the old card fight area fights that I used to do quite actively and we're combining them with some early lists. So what this is, is I'll take an early list that I've actually been working on, give you a fight of it and then at the end we're going to sit and discuss the actual list itself. So really nice to have. But before we get into the game, I do just want to quickly give a rundown of the deck we're discussing today. So for today's one, we've gone for one from the Festival Collection, because that is coming out very soon in the English side. And I do want to discuss it on the channel. This one is Lauren Aroll. So Lauren Aroll gained a really nice buff with her new form with Sing To Me Lauren Aroll. Because this is actually a grade 3 that you'd ride and go into the old... Heartfelt song Lauren Aroll as a finisher compared to the other versions of the dress ups where you want to be going into the dress up version as the finisher. So it's really solid. Obviously, what Sing With Me Lauren Aroll does is the first skill says when this unit is placed on Vanguard Circle, you look at the top five cards of your deck, you can choose a grade three or less unit from among them and call it a rearguard circle. So we're getting that good compression getting our units on the board very quickly which is really nice to have then we've also got the second skill of also a vanguard circle when this unit attacks a vanguard you can choose up to one face up song from your order zone and sing it and then if your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater you can soul blast one grade three or one grade three card with lauren or in its card name and until the end of the battle this unit gains a drive and, if you're, and your opponent cannot call Sentinels from hand to Guardian Circle. Bit of a mouthful with that one. But it's really nice to have. So obviously, Lauren Aroll keeps the Sentinel Shrick skill. Yes, it's now restricted from... Instead of where it was, you used to have two... Needs two face downs. You're now having to have a Grade 3 Lauren Aroll in Soul. So, very hard to work around. Unless... You look at the new support she got alongside her, and that really helps out the situation. So the grade two that we got to support her is the clear stream Marilou. And Marilou's got two skills as well. First one being, during your turn, if your order zone has two or more face down cards, this unit gets 10,000 power. Her second skill is where she shines. Her skill is auto, if you Persona Road this turn, the cost of this card can be placed, paid with Soul Blast 1 instead. And the skill is, when this unit is placed on Rearguard Circle, you can cost, put a card from your hand into your soul, so then search your deck for up to one song card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So this is where the deck really starts to flow. So obviously we can use this to shove one of our low runner rolls into our soul, then grab our orders that we're missing from our deck to our hand, which is really nice to have. And then push out the big numbers once we get to the turn 4 plays, because she's then going to be a 20k swinger, 30k on Persona Ride. So the numbers do really start to rack up, which is really nice to have. They both complement each other really well, which is nice. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move into the game and then discuss the list afterwards. All right, and here we are in the game, getting set up. Let's get going. So obviously doing the heads to tails siding, we do get the dots coin flip, and we are against greed on masks. So we see from our hand here, got the blitz order, the blitz regulus piece, which is really nice to have. We have got a persona ride as well, so obviously you can really go. If we start digging in deep, we can maybe try and find the new grade two. So let's just put a Lauren Earl in Soul so we can get our triple drive online for the turn three. Plus with us going second, we can actually get the double autumn order off. And we can get the double draw out of it and actually have proper, really good plays, which is really nice. But now starting, obviously, opponent going first. We can see from their hand they've actually opened the over trigger. Which is unfortunate for them because obviously the over trigger in Greed on is a very strong play. And as you can see from our hand, we're not really able to build an early board. So we do obviously swing in, get the Sanctitude off it. They want upside to hit the Greedon player actually having the over trigger in his hand. 
is the fact of Lauren Roll actually says no Sentinels. So this is a big shield in hand from Dachi Guard with. But early turns, he's just doing basic plays. We know Guard, because obviously we don't, we're not in a bad situation at this point. Plus, we don't want to waste our one shield we've got on hand when we know we've got the Greedon Mask turn incoming. Fortunately, Lauren Roll is a very peaceful line bit in the early game, so unless you see good cards in the early game you do have to take a lot of the damage discarding triggers potentially it is down to what you do don't see obviously we get our spring order into the play from the ride up we're coming 15k we do get a lucky crit here which is nice and we do see one green on mask going to damage which is really solid and obviously we see a second one go to the drop zone here so we know the persona rides aren't going to be prominent in this game which with Greedon Mask is actually a very big problem because you're not gaining massive amount of powers compared to normal Greedon. So, opponents there thinking about what to put in Soul. Obviously, the Rile-Up skill to get the new order. Not the new order, the new Grade 2. Because obviously, it says it clones whatever card is in your Soul. And obviously, he's now making his Dragon Trees. Because he wants to get it all set up. He then can obviously activate the that. The Dragon Tree Mask to try and dig for more combo pieces. Either the Masks himself or more Dragon Trees. But you can see he's actually going for the early ride up. Because he knows he can't get the big soul for Greed on Masks. He's just going to go for a nice simple, let's see what I can do play. Plus it also means he's then not going to be a turn behind either. Which is really solid. Obviously he swings in there. I know guard because obviously... Hand's not amazing, but he does get a crit there, which is very strong for him. Because obviously, now pressures plus the front on top makes up for it not being a persona run. And he's actually got big numbers. We do whiff a heal there, which is very unfortunate. Greed on restands and then swings in again. This now forces us to think what we want to do. And we do, I do actually go with the Elementara Sanctitude because I don't want to risk another crit going on that for the game. He does get the heal though and go back down to two. That's fine because we can now actually pressure with our Lauren roll. And as you can see, we're still drawing just triggers off of it. So we're having to keep discarding triggers. We start off with doing the order, grabbing the order from deck. So obviously we grab our tree. And obviously when it's put in the order zone, we draw a card. We draw another Yuika, which is really good to set up leading in. And we do get the new grade two for Lauren roll support. Which we can activate her skill now to get the Lauren Rolling Soul and actually dig out the Six Flower Fractal. So we're all set up for our turn four play. Obviously, now, because obviously we don't need to play the Six Flower Fractal this turn, we can play down another autumnal and get another draw out of it, do even more compression. And because obviously we went second, Yuika's 5k is now online as well. So we do get that extra nice bit of that's going to be a 28k column, which is now hitting magic numbers. So as you can see here, got a really good board set up. We can do a double Eka bounce to clear our front row, keep them all safe. And we do go for Lauren Roll skill here, gaining the crit and the triple drive and the Sentinel Restrict to try and force out. This is going through unless you drop a perfect guard, unless you drop a big shield. And he does go for a two to pass with the crit trigger. So first check's a perfect guard. Second check's a crit. Now here's where I actually play a little bit sneaky. Because I'm an R where to put it. I then do power to the vanguard but give the crit to the rearguard Echnoa. So then the Echnoa is still providing pressure on the extra attack. Because it's still going to be a 28k column. Plus if I've got the two, tri two triggers... I'd still have the crit due to Lauren Roll's skill. This now gets to be a nice 18k swing at the Vanguard. Soul Blasting 1 to bounce the Grade 2 back to hand again. So I can play it down again next turn. And do even more compression. So I can take another order out of my deck. Reduce the number of triggers in there. And I can't blast 1. Ditch as Fractal. Because obviously I've got 2 at this point. I don't need it. And dig even deeper with the deck. We do get another Echnoa. So obviously I'm not too concerned about keeping the one on the board now. So I choose not to use not, uh, Eureka's skill. So I've got it there as an intercept. And if they want to retire it, they go for it. Because they don't know I've got that extra Echnoa in hand. 
So the bonus note information that we have is really good to have. He does do the Greedo Mask Soul Blast skill and gets the Guman, which is really good for him because that now provides a lot of pressure. And he does, as we see there, get the Unicorn, which when it's put in Soul will retire Rear Guard. But I decided to be smart here. I've obviously not seen the Over Trigger yet, so knowing he's going to be going for a Restanding Vanguard. Oh, I forgot to leave, take out a battle phase. That is my fault. But that now gives me the passive skill of if my opponent hits the over trip, goes to 100 million power, he loses a critical. So it keeps the over trigger in check. Because obviously, I don't know it's in his hand at this point. He's obviously retiring off my Ekanawa, which is really good. And obviously, he's kind of blasted through his Goo Man, so he's now got the guard restrict for the rest of the turn. But due to how we've constantly been drawing our triggers, we've got very good hand size. And we can actually very easily work around not having the double guard, the have to worry about the double guard restrict. I do say a no guard here, because obviously the crit on screen is a glitch. I do apologize for that. But he doesn't get a trigger, so it's only one damage going through. Puts us to four. He's swinging in with 20k. I know it's a two-card guard of tricks. So I just, yep, I take it, hit the over trigger defensively. That's fine. It did not make a difference. But we draw into a Persona ride, which is really good. Because obviously with the new Easter-themed bosses, they've all got this dress-up skill that says they are treated as the old ones at all times. So it does count for Persona ride, which is really good in Lauren Earl's case. But obviously we can then go to the fact of turn three, you go into the new Lorna roll to then switch into the old Lorna roll for the finisher because obviously the old Lorna roll doesn't have her guard restrict until you actually hit two face down orders. So going the new one first for the guard restrict, then going into the old one to have the double guard restrict is really nice to have. As you can see, there I've taken the, the uh, next six flower fractal out of my deck just to get even more compression going because we need, want to see our triggers as soon as possible. But at that point, we start swinging. I use, oh, so first I use Lauren Earl's skill because obviously count blast one, get the next order face down. Our crit is now online. We're in a really good position. Next turn, obviously, we can drop another six flower fractal, flipping up one of the face down cards and gain some really big power. So we do start swinging here. Starting off with the Ekanoa first, because obviously it's the smaller side pushing up to 25, so it's becoming a nice, easy... 15k shield were taken out, but he does take it trying to aim for a defensive to try and survive the turn. We then do swing in with the new rear guard. Gains 10k because obviously now we've got our fate two face down orders. So it becomes really big. Obviously forces a very big 20k shield out of his hand. Lauren Rolf stands. Gains 20k on top because obviously we've got two face downs the time of the activation and they can't sentinel so i believe this is the point that we do see the over trigger get dropped as shield so i then know it's out of the game obviously i'm manually yep he's drops the over trigger for a two to pass so we start our drive checks first one being another persona ride so this pretty much locks in now we are killing you next turn the front here is really good because it provides even more pressure for the rear guards. So we swing in with the 48k on this side, forcing out a perfect guard. Choose not to bounce again because obviously we've got an Ekanoa in hand. I'm not too worried if he chooses to retire it. But we do want to keep our filtering going every single turn so we do bounce the other grey 2 back to hand. So, as you see here, we're in a very strong position now, going into the opponent's turn. We've got more than enough shield to survive what could be his big push turn. As you can see, he drops down the um, Miroslava. Does make a slight misplay, because obviously... I know he's not... No, Miroslava doesn't need to call Sekhan, it's the other. it's the Dragon Tree that does. Yep, he builds a board up, gets the Gooman back out again because he's really hoping that this is going to be his big final push. 
But uh, here's where things change, because obviously I think, oh, I can perfect guard the first one. But he sold last the unicorn to guarantee that everything is a two-card guard restrict. So obviously, I drop a front and a crit, because obviously now I know, oh, all your over-triggers out. I haven't got to worry about that. I can do a nice, simple... This is now 48 to his 13. He's not going to pass. I can play ca carefully now. And we do see draw. He drew drew a crit trigger and get, does get healed, so he does get to go back down to five. Because obviously Greedon does have the passive skill, even on the masks of you only die when you take seven. Obviously, the base Greedon was restricted to having another Greedon in soul. Masks doesn't have that. It's just naturally you've got seven. So really big push for it. Draw on the front it has really helped him. He did decide to draw on the heel, sorry. He did decide to instead pump up his rear guards. He did, no, he did one vanguard, one rear guard, because obviously the rear guard does gain 5k shield, power and shield. So he's done some really nice plays here. And he gained plus 5k and plus 1 drive due to his grade two, other grade 1 that he put in. The Inken. So he does come swinging in. And because we've got such a good hand now. I can afford to perfect guard. With using the Echnoa. Because he hasn't retired my other Echnoa. Discard my spare copy of the new grade 2. And I'm in a very safe position at this point. He does get a front trigger. Which does put even more pressure on. And he's now got the heel on top. So if he goes even further back down to 4. So I do have to put a lot of pressure on. In this upcoming turn. I sit and think and logical situation is to take this one block the other one because it's going to be two triggers no matter what and this way around it's a normal guard not an over guard so obviously we stand and we draw but here's where things really start to get interesting so obviously now we can persona ride again we've got Three face down orbs, but obviously one's going to flip back up again due to the flat fractal. Because I've chose to, so I can then flip it back down again to give the vanguard the crit skill. And we're doing the on play skill. Obviously, you can press our deck even further because there is still one six flower fractal left in the deck. And every card that we take out is obviously one less non trigger in there to put the real big pressure on. And obviously we can't blast again to put the crit on the vanguard so we can now start putting the real pressure on we've got the rear guard that's going to gain the 10k as well this point though we don't want to echnoa because obviously that's then going to leave us with no counter blasts so it is all about pacing with our counter blast in this deck now we do swing in that side first and because obviously we've got three face downs swing with the echnoa column at full power makes the most sense so saving Saving it for the next swing because obviously it's going to be boosted. It's going to gain the 5k still from Echnoa's skill because that's not locked to a counter blast. And you're forcing out really big numbers from the opponent. Because obviously he's now incepts the incept. It does gain 5k shield as well. This is the bit I queried because obviously I forgot about parts. Because obviously the card is still relatively new. I'm still trying to get used to everything, but it does gain 5k shield. So obviously I cleared up there. Uh, oh wait, never mind, because obviously I've read it. But now he's got to put a lot of hope that we don't get a crit trigger on our Lauren and Roll, because it gains massive numbers here, gaining 30k out of it. Can't Sentinel. We know he's over triggers out, so his big shield is gone. It is crit for game. We go in, first check being Agnoa. Second check is a heal trigger, which is really good for us. First check, no trigger. Second check, no trigger. Obviously, there's our heal going off. But now we can swing in this side here. 43k. It's a lot of shield he's got to chuck down. 28. 38. But unfortunately, he's playing the restand heal. So obviously, he's playing smart with keeping it for the right timing. 
but it does mean that Ekno is just out of his range because he only can reach to the fort. He can only reach up to the extra shield that that reaches is 28, 25k, puts him 38, 43 with the other 5k in hand. Does take his final damage, and that is going to be game. I shall catch you guys back in a minute with the whiteboard as we go over the Lauren Roll list. So that was the game. As you can see from there, Laurenel's got really good deck compression, which leads to a very solid late game, and really big numbers on the top across the board, due to the fact of Marilu and Eknoa combining with the Uikas really nicely. So, here's the list that I went with today. Very interesting one, personally. So as you can see here, obviously, first thing to note is the Blitz, is the Regardless, regardless piece. And I went for the Blitz order for the fact of... You don't want to be using Forbidol for the fact of you don't want to call your Grade Threes to rear guard. You want them in your hand to then keep Persona riding with. And because of that same method, you don't want the regal the Gratius Gradle for the fact of obviously you're going to be Persona riding every turn anyway, especially with all the deck compression you've got and the draw power from Eknoa. Plus, playing Forbidol or Gratius Gradle does mean you can't play a set order that turn, so it can lead to certain complications. Yes, I do know, obviously, that Elementaria Sanctuary is going to conflict with the Blitz order. But due to the fact that we've got so much draw power in the deck, we can fi normally find a PG to go alongside the Regalis piece and work around it that way. Talking about all these resources, we have gone for the resource-based Blue OT for this deck. And this is due to the fact of we want our Perfect Guards back in hand, our Extra Shield back in hand extra persona ride so we can keep comboing off and we it also lets us discard an order in the early game and then grab it back with the with the over trigger if we end up hitting it so it leads to some really good combos obviously yuika is a very good part of the deck it combos off really nicely with marilu bouncing it every single turn gain that extra compression for the cost of a soul blast because we've persona out road if not we're putting a card from hand soul to filter still so it's not re not really hurting us at all plus she does lead to really good numbers because a 13k uika on a persona ride turn boosting a 30k marilune does lead to 43k columns which then on that note is forcing out really big shield value especially when you're combining this also alongside the Sing With Me Laura Roll and Heartfelt Soul Laura Laura Roll, both shutting down perfect guards when they attack. You're draining a lot of big shield from your opponent constantly throughout the game to whittle down their hands as quickly as possible. All in all, deck is very, very fun, and it's looking to be a solid meta contender, especially going into the set 11 meta. Well, that is going to be it for this video. If you haven't done so already, please do like and subscribe. It very much does help this channel. And please do let me know in the comments below what you think of this video. It's a new style I'm trying out. I want it to work. Let me know if there's things you'd like to see changed. And let me know what you think of it. The goods and the bads. I'm here for everything. But I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.